So this is the new Pinterest analytics, and that's what we're going to be covering today. It's pretty basic. One of the best things I love about it is that it's extremely easy to understand. Um, you do have to have a business account to be able to view these analytics, and it's pretty easy to create a business account. You can learn more in the support area of Pinterest. It's one or two mouse clicks, and then you have to register your website. You have to verify a website, and then you're good to go. Okay. Uh, so the way that you access analytics once you do have it live is you simply go to your profile, you know, whatever your Pinterest profile is, in the gear icon, click on that, click on analytics, and then what you're going to see is the overview report, okay? So the overview report, oh, let me just see here. I skipped a couple of slides here. Here we go. Let's see. Here we go. Beautiful. So the overview report is what it is. It's showing you an overview. And there are three areas that Pinterest will show you data about. One is your Pinterest profile, people clicking on it, looking at pins, sharing pins, repinning pins, your audience, who is viewing your pins, what, what are their demographics, what other topics do they like, and then finally activity from your website. So hopefully you have really great content on your website, especially really great pictures, because people will take those and pin them on to Pinterest. And that's, that's kind of what you want. The purpose of Pinterest in one way is to drive traffic to web pages on your website. So you definitely want to have a strategy where you're creating really great images on your website that people just can't help but pin and share on Pinterest. Okay, so this is the overview report. If we drill down a little bit deeper into the profile, the first thing we're going to look at is impressions. So impressions is simply how many times did people see your stuff, either your Pinterest profile, your pins, your boards, how much uh, visibility is your Pinterest profile getting? And you could drill down a little bit deeper into this. Um, you can change the date range. So you can sp uh, select a specific date range that you want to analyze. You can go with the pre-selected seven days, 14 days, or 30 days, or you can pick your own date. Okay, so I just wanted to point that out. Uh, and then we have repins. So you have impressions. Next question is, First question is, well, how many people are in how many people are, are aware of my Pinterest profile and my boards and my pins? That's really answering the impressions question. Okay. If we want to talk about, well, who, you know, what pins are being repinned? People find stuff on our boards and they repin it. They find stuff on other boards, but it's linking to our website. How, um, you know, how active are they? Okay, so this is really talking about repins, and it will show you the most repinned pins from the last 30 days. That's another report. So if you go to this report, the repins report, and you just scroll down a little bit, you will see the most repinned pins from the past 30 days. And I'm going to talk about a very quick case study here. This top pin, breast cancer awareness is every day. Uh, you can see that it has 178 repins, all right? Now, this was from a board that uh, actually linked to a Facebook update, right? So this, uh, this image, this is a little image. The image says, I'm not going to click on it because we can't right now because I'm in the middle of a presentation. But basically it says breast cancer awareness is every day, but for a survivor, I'm sorry, breast cancer awareness is October, but for a survivor it's every single day, right? So that kind of struck a nerve. Lots of people share it. And so what we what we're doing is we or what we did is we are now instead of directing that traffic to that Facebook update, which was actually published about a year and a half ago, we were redirecting the traffic to the website. OK, so we can go into any pin that we have published and we've shared on Pinterest and we can edit the link. We can go in and edit the link. So if we did publish a pin and it's really sending traffic to a website that's not really the best it for our strategy, we can simply edit that and send the traffic to wherever we want to. Okay, so that's just a quick little mini mini case study as a side as an aside. Uh, the next report we're going to get into it are clicks. So these are people clicking on your pins, clicking on your boards, clicking on your profiles, uh, and mostly it's going to be focusing on the pins because that's kind of what people click on. Okay, and then if we go to the Pinterest profile. Right. So we're still looking at the profile. We're looking at the most repins. So your most shared pins from all of your boards 
You can drill down even a little bit deeper, you know, looking at each board and, and look at analytics around pins that are being shared from that board, right? But you're going to focus mostly on pins, the ones that are getting repin the most, right? Because a repin is kind of like a share on Facebook or a retweet. It's the same idea, okay? Number 10, uh, or slide 10, I should say, uh, you can also look at pins that rank higher in search. So this is really important. We can look at these pins and we can see how are people searching for our uh, content? You know, what search terms are people using to discover our pins? Should we be publishing more content that's related to those search terms? That might be a good, um, you know, a good thing to do. Start publishing pins based on the pins that are either the most repinned, like we said before, or the ones that rank higher in search, all right? The next is your audience. So we covered your uh, account or your profile, right? Impressions, clicks, repins, number one pins, top pins in search. Now we're talking about audience. So these are the people. Now let's look at the people. So these are, uh, again, we can change the date range if we wanted to, right? So we can simply change these numbers if we wanted to. Uh, but the question that we're gonna answer right here is how many people engage with my pins, right? And this is the magic number right here. It's engagement rate, right? Engagement rate is probably the most important number that talks about content quality, okay? Or engagement, you know, uh, how engaged is your audience? You always want to answer that with engagement rate. Engagement rate is essentially the percent of people that saw your stuff, okay? These are the number of people that saw stuff on my uh, Pinterest, related to my Pinterest profile. And now we're looking at uh, the number of people that actually did something, right? So 6.48%. I don't know if that's high or low. That's all relative. If it's low, we have to get it up. If it's, if it's high and we're really proud, we might get kind of arrogant, right? So you should always be moving the needle forward based on your own performance, not comparing yourself with somebody else, okay? Uh, the next one is, let me see here. Uh, let me see. Uh, oh, just wanted to point out also that under all of the reports, you can filter by apps, right? So you can look at how are people viewing my pins? Are they viewing them mostly with an iPhone, mobile, or are they on the web? If you find that most of your audience is interacting with your content through uh, mobile web, iPhone, iPad, Android, Android phone, or any, any of these except the web, it might be a really good, good idea to, to look at your website and say, is it responsive? How does our website look on a mobile device? Because it's one thing to see a pin on an iPhone, which is going to look beautiful if you're using the Pinterest app. But if you click on that pin and you go over to your website and it's not mobile and people have to kind of zoom in and with their little forefinger and thumb and they can't really make sense of anything, it's a, it's a waste. And the next screen here, just to let you know, you can also look at how many of your followers, so people who have liked your board or followed your board, how many of those people are uh, interacting with your content? What's their demographic? What are their interests? I'm going to get to interests in just a second. Okay. So again, we can filter by all audiences, people on Pinterest, just anybody really that interacts with our pins or people who have specifically followed our profile or any of our boards, okay? So we can drill down into that a little bit more, all right? Now, interests. Interest is actually kind of interesting. I'm sure they're gonna dig down a little bit deeper into this, but when you click on interest, you're gonna find out the top interest that your audience is into. So what does this mean? This means, wow, we should start uh, maybe talking about some of these other topics. How can we thread our cause, our organization, into these other interests, right? So if it's a breast cancer organization, we might want to talk about, um, you know, maybe some, uh, you know, furniture companies that really are breast cancer friendly or really support breast cancer survivors, right? Uh, or, I mean, if there was clothing on here, that might be a better example, but there's not, unfortunately, in this situation. It might be a good example. And then we have uh, audience boards with lots of your pins. So this is telling you, this is what people think about you. These are the boards that people are putting your pins onto. So you can see uh, almost like the meta topic. So blog ideas, 
fundraising and nonprofit marketing. That's perfect. That's how people are thinking about me. What I want to do is I want to investigate these boards and see what other topics are people, what other popular pins are on these boards that I might want to address. Okay. And then finally, you have activity from your website. And I've said this before, but the unique thing about Pinterest is that in a way, you don't really have to have a Pinterest account or a Pinterest profile to really get the benefit of it. And what I mean by that is the first step in any Pinterest strategy should be to make sure that your website is Pinterest friendly. Look at your website, your blog posts, for example. Do they all have featured images? What do those featured images look like? Do they stand on their own, right? If you share an image, does it make sense as a standalone item? Okay, does it communicate a story? Is it powerful on its own? Finally, you want to take a web page from your website and test it on Pinterest. You can simply go and pin it and see what type of images are actually being pulled by Pinterest to show up as available for being pinned by users. Okay, because when someone goes to your website and they want to pin something, a variety of different images will come up. You want to make sure that the right images are showing up for people. And then the last question or one of the last questions here is, what pins from my website get the most clicks? Again, most popular pins from your website. And you can look at pins, for example, this one, Constant Contact pinned this article from my website, sending a lot of traffic. So what do I want to do with that? I want to enhance my relationship with Constant Contact, first of all, in my specific case. Okay, in your case, if you find someone else who's pinning your stuff and it's getting a lot of repins, and there's a, a, you know, almost like top user or top fan, you definitely want to take care of them and recognize them. But it seems like they pinned a few pins from my website and they, they are, you know, people from their community are active. They're repinning these pins. And what does that do? That sends traffic to my website. So this is all a good thing. Okay. So that's a quick and dirty overview. And I'm going to open it up for Q&A right now.